There's nothing more divisive, nothing more controversial, nothing that makes fans go crazier than a missed call. If a sport has referees, they're going to miss a call. Or maybe they won't and half the fans think they did. It's a sports tale as old as time. But our reactions to it are not. I believe something has dramatically changed how we view the most aggravating event in sports. Give me 10 minutes and I'll explain why. The year is 1990. University of Colorado is taking on Missouri in football. You know the story. Refs award an extra play after a failed fourth down conversion. Buffs gain a first down and eventually win. The fifth down game. It lives in infamy to this day. Fast forward to December 3rd, 2019, 29 years after the infamous fifth down. Houston Rockets guard James Harden comes away with a loose ball and cruises to an easy breakaway dunk. He flushes the ball to give the Rockets a 104-89 lead. But because of the way the ball flew out of the bottom of the net, the refs mistook it for a miss and didn't count the basket. The Rockets went on to give up the 13-point lead they held with seven minutes left and lost in double OT. The next day, the quote-unquote water cooler talk was the refs mistakenly waving off the dunk. It seemed like it was the biggest story in the world that day, which in the social media age is the equivalent of a year in 1990. But it was a largely non-consequential basket with seven minutes left in a game where the Rockets blew a double-digit lead. The fifth down was a massive error that led to CU coming from behind to win by two. But they arguably had a similar impact on discourse when it comes to referee errors. Why would this be the case when the two plays had such different impacts on the games they happened in? Two words, video replay. In the 90s, there was no video replay available to the officials on the field. Hell, it was only 27 years since video replay was even invented for TV. So the officials' calls were final. The earliest example of an American sport using video replay I could find was the NBA instituting it in 2002. Interesting enough, it was instituted because of a blown call in the 2002 Western Conference Finals, which saw a buzzer beater shot erroneously counted, even though it was released after time expired in the second quarter. And video replay has divulged into two roads, examining the objective and re-examining official decisions. The first use of replay is fairly innocuous. Sports like tennis, volleyball, and cricket have used it to great effect. The eagle eye in tennis gives us an objective view of a ball hitting the court. If it clips the line, it's in. If not, it's out, and the point's over. With very few exceptions, it's a relatively flawless system. As you might have guessed, I'm not talking about that use of replay. I'm more concerned with the more subjective uses of what was supposed to be an objective addition to eliminate the most blatantly missed calls. We've seen a couple examples of that subjective system getting out of control just in the past week. The addition of video-assisted replay to the Premier League has become a molten hot topic of controversy the world over. It slowed down matches, cost teams goals, and lost teams points. And of course, the subject du jour, Ohio State's overturned fumble. It was a third quarter play that saw Ohio State seemingly strip a receiver and take the loose ball to the house against Clemson in the Fiesta Bowl. The play was overturned and cost the Buckeyes a touchdown. In a close game, six points could make all the difference. On the flip side, that play happened in the third quarter. Ohio State failed to score a touchdown in the red zone all night. Justin Fields, who had thrown one interception all season coming into that game, threw two, including one on the final drive with OSU down six. But again, the talk of the next few days was the blown call. Same with a missed pass interference call in a 2019 Sunday night football game between the Seahawks and the 49ers in Week 17, a game that could have decided the number one seed in the NFC. But yet, all of these calls have an interesting commonality. None of them cost teams the game directly. If that fumble between Ohio State and Clemson had come on the last play of the game, or if Harden's dunk came with five seconds left in OT, we'd have a real discussion. But so much else happened between those blown calls and the end of the game, it's almost not even worth mentioning. So why do it? I believe our quick reactions to situations like this are because referee mistakes have been shoved into the spotlight with the advent of instant replay. Especially on social media, when video replays take 5-10 to 10 minutes to complete and happen in crucial situations, it's a formula for absolute disaster. It's drawn our focus away from what really goes on in the game and switches it to the ref mistakes. 
And don't don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm down for calling out referee errors and correcting them. But by acting like a mistake with a ton of game left to play decided the outcome, it feels like we're doing a massive disservice to the very concept of sport. But of course, this wouldn't be a general admission video if I didn't at least offer a solution, or at least that's what I like to tell myself. Now, my solution is going to sound a bit general, but bear with me here. We need to eliminate that second form of replay I mentioned, the kind where we reevaluate referee decisions post fact. The objective kind of review, eagle eye in tennis or a stumps review in cricket, for example, is the only kind where all parties can leave satisfied with the call made, if not a little disappointed. But Griff, I hear you justifiably asking, how can we turn a review of a catch or fumble into an objective decision? I thought offside was already an objective standard. But I think the issue here comes down to how we actually approach the issue of instant replay. Think about the difference between correcting an objective mistake and re-examining a referee decision. In one instance, we're correcting a call. In the other, we're correcting judgment. The NFL's decision to review pass interference is a great example. There's no objective standard there. It's just reevaluating a referee's judgment in making or not making the interference call. Think about where VAR has become deficient, judging offsides. There is, there is a standard, of course, but the standard was not made for replay. Replay was never meant to assess if a guy's fingernail is offside and then make a, a game-changing call based on that. In both cases, the standard is insufficient when using technology that never could have been imagined when the standards were first written. We overanalyze ref decisions because we're told to. But in tennis, if a linesman misses a call that's overturned by eagle eye, we don't question the linesman call or talk about how it changed the game. If we were given a clear standard for what a catch is, two hands on the ball and take two steps, for example, then we'd have nothing to complain about if the call gets made, even if it's not the way that we like it. Don't get me wrong, humans aren't perfect. There's always room for human error in sport. But the level of discourse surrounding these issues has gotten frustrating to see on social media and destructive to the pursuit of eliminating officiating errors from sport. And that's what this whole thing was supposed to be for in the first place. It may be idealistic, but if we can shift the discussion from what refs are doing wrong to what we could do right, we might just be able to affect some change.